Hey everyone, Laura here with Rags to Rugs and today we're all about weaving in those ends. We're going to be demonstrating three different types of rugs and three different types of tools to weave in those ends and we're going to get started right away. So the first rug that I want to demonstrate is just your basic fabric rug. This is probably the one of the most common crocheted rugs or for that matter toothbrush or whatever type of rug that you're making and we're, we've uh, crocheted this using a Q-size crochet hook. I'm going to show you how to weave in the tails, not using the crochet hook, but using a jumbo safety pin. So for this rug, I have established where I'm going to end this rug. I'm going to insert my hook in the back of that very next stitch, which is right here. I'm going to hook the fabric. I'm going to draw it through all the way through and pull that through. By doing that, it gives a smoother transition to where you're going to end up. I'm going to turn this over now, and we're going to use our jumbo safety print pin. Let me turn this so at least you can see it really well. I'm going to use that safety pin. I'm going to fold this over, insert my safety pin, and we're going to start feeding this through the back side, all these loops over here. I recommend that you go through six stitches one direction. Just use that safety pin to feed it through. Make sure you don't get too tight, but allow that smooth transition on the front side. That was two stitches. I'm going to do two more. Using the safety pin to guide you through those stitches one at a time. Feed it through. We're going to do a couple more here. And now we're going to reverse. Every time that you reverse the direction, you're locking in those stitches. Less apt to fall out with wear. I'm going to try to do six stitches in this direction using this wonderful safety pin. This is something that most people have in their houses, so it's not something that you necessarily have to go out and buy. But wow, it does work very, very well and very quickly. Go through a couple more going this direction. So we've gone five or six stitches in one direction. We're going to go five or six stitches in the opposite direction, locking that in. And it's as simple as that. You can't see it on that side. You can't see it on this side. It's a beautiful fluid motion here on the outside, so you can't see where we left off. And I'm going to simply take my shears and cut that there. We have one more tail on this rug that I'd like to demonstrate doing the same thing. Using that same jumbo safety pin, I'm going to pin it right here. And all we're going to do now is do the same thing. We're going to insert the safety pin in the next stitch, a very close stitch of where you left off, and feed it through this one. Let's find a couple more that go in this direction. and this direction. And I'm going to head back to where I was, where I started. The safety pin is very inexpensive. Like I said, most people have them in your house anyway. And it really works well to guide through those stitches, locking it in so that in, over time they don't work out. We're going to put it in this one here. And come back one more stitch going this direction. As you can see, you cannot tell where that tail was. And I'm literally going to just clip it right there. And we've now woven in the tails on this beautiful rug. So the second rug I'd like to demonstrate is a jute rug. Now this is one of my favorite rugs. I've made literally hundreds of these. Uh, this is made out of a six-ply jute. Um, this is what it looks like when you first buy it. We have these available through our website as, as well. And we're going to be using a different tool for this one. Rather than the safety pin in the first demonstration, we're going to be using a six inch latch hook. And just like the name, it's got this little latch here, that, which is perfect when you're working with this six ply jute. So with this jute rug, we're going to be using uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, latch hook. And I love this for this because it, because of the latch that's on this, it's so easy to capture the jute and feed it through. 
And the way we're going to do this is come from the opposite direction. I'm going to actually insert the latch hook all the way through. We're going to then lay the jute right on top of that the, the hook. And we're going to close this latch. See that little latch right there? That's what makes this tool so awesome. When you close that then, it's very easy to feed that jute right through those stitches. As easy as that. Take it back off the latch hook. We're going to find two or three more stitches here. Do the same thing. We're going to lay that jute right on top of there, close the latch of the latch hook, and feed it through. As easy as that. It literally disappears within this. It's important again to go back the opposite direction, or multiple directions. So I'm going to feed it through right here, lay that jute on the end of the hook, close the latch, and easily feed it through those stitches. Hiding it, but going in different directions is going to be locking it in. We're going to go back this direction again. I find some good little stitches right here. I'm going to feed it through, all the way through, lay the jute right on top of the hook, close the latch, and feed it. Whoops, I didn't, didn't quite hold it. But right on top of that, close the latch. So that might happen to you too and feed it through easily. I think I'm going to take it a couple more stitches this direction. Again, feed through that latch hook, lay the jute right on top, close the latch, and pull it through. Very, very, very easy. You cannot see those stitches at all, on the, this is, and this is the back side of it. At this point, we've gone three different directions. I'm going to then clip that jute right there, and that will hold then for years to come. So that's as easy as it is with the jute rug. So the third demonstration I'd like to share with you is using a different type of product. The first one was with, with fabric. The second one was with a six-ply jute. This one is something that we've recently shared with you, uh, something a new discovery of mine, which is this Bonnie Craft Cord. It's a six millimeter uh, product. We made this rug in an earlier video. To weave in the tails on this, we're not going to use the jumbo safety pin. We're not going to use the latch hook, but instead we're going to actually use the same hook that we used to make the rug. And I'm going to show you how to weave in the tails with this one as well. So if you watched our video on using this product, you remember that I said to go ahead and keep that connection point very loose. When we're ready to feed in or weave in our tails, we simply make a simple knot right here, pull it very tight, and then we're going to be in, uh, uh, weaving in these ends. But this particular rug, we're using the same hook that we used to make the rug, which is this Q-size hook. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate how to do this. We're going to actually feed that Q-size hook through three stitches. We're going to hook this cord, turn our hook just a little bit, and feed it through. That was three stitches that direction. I'm going to pick up three more stitches right here using the head of that crochet hook. Hook that tail and draw it through those three stitches. We always go three, six stitches in the opposite direction too. So I'm going to now find three stitches this direction, which I think these three are just perfect. I'm going to insert my hook, hook that cord, and we're going to draw it through those three stitches. Looks like three more right here hook it, and draw it through. There you go. I think we can actually go just a couple stitches the other direction as well, just to make sure. Here's my hook, sliding through. It's a little bit tight sometimes, but that's okay. That's what you want. All right, and then we can trim that right off there. And you can do the same thing with this one. But I also want to demonstrate on this particular rug 
the very beginning. This is where we started, and we need to now weave this tail through too, and you'll do the same thing on the other end. So I'm going to use my crochet hook, and I'm gonna hook these stitches right here. We wanna make it as hidden as we possibly can. I'm gonna feed this through this one here. It's a little bit of a challenge to get it through sometimes, but we can do this. There we go. Now on this one, we wanna make sure to maintain the corner right here before we proceed, which I've done. I'm gonna go a couple more stitches here, insert my Q hook, and again, it's always gonna be tight, but with this product, we want this to be tight because it's gonna slip out a little easier than your jute or your fabric. There's three stitches there. I'm gonna hook that cord and draw it through. Now, as always, we wanna go the opposite direction, so I'm gonna turn my rug around. And we're gonna find a couple stitches on this side and do the same thing. Hook that cord and draw it through. See how invisible they become? You can't even tell that we're feeding this in. There's one. There's a couple more I think we're gonna grab, and we're gonna go the other direction just to make absolutely certain that we've got this locked in. I'll turn my work one more time, Lisa. She's getting dizzy with all the different directions I'm taking this, but this is important. We're gonna hook it. We're gonna draw through those two stitches. And there's three right together there. I'm gonna grab all three of those. There is no way in the world that these are all ever gonna work out. And that's very important to you. There's one, there's two, and there's three. We've maintained the, the nice, beautiful corner. We've worked in, the, gone three different directions. I'm gonna clip that now. And we have now woven in the tail, tails of this wonderful Bonnie Craft cord. So as always, thank you so much for checking out our videos. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that the information we shared with you is, is valuable to you. Um, as always, thank you for subscribing to our channel and commenting. I do my best to respond to those every single day. I appreciate you so much. So in the meantime, as always, make it a great day.